Hello and welcome to ShowMeAcademy.com. In this tutorial, we're going to step you through many of the options that you have for adjusting your page parameters in Microsoft Internet Explorer before you send something off to print. Now, when you send something off to print, you click the print button in Internet Explorer, it's going to use a series of defaults, and those defaults may or may not end, uh, give you a finished page uh, that meets the, the display that you are looking for. But you have a lot of control over that, and there are a lot of things that you can tweak even visually before you send it off to the printer. So we'll step you through those options. First of all, from the Internet Explorer window, we're going to click on the print menu here. Now I'm going to, I'm going to pull up the menu being that little uh, downward arrow there. If I just click the print button here to the left, it will send it to the printer with whatever default settings I have in place. But I want to be able to review and change those settings if necessary before I send it to the printer. So I'm going to be careful about not specifically clicking on this part of the button. I'm going to click on the little down arrow here to the right. And when I do that, it's going to pull up a menu. That menu is going to have several options. Uh, the, the main one that we're going to play with today is print preview. So when you click that, what it's going to do is it's going to bring up a visual representation of your page, basically exactly as it will look after it's done printing. So if you don't see something looking properly in this preview, the odds are that it's not going to look properly when it comes off of your printer. So you should work with it as necessary here until you get it looking just right. First of all, if we go across the buttons here at the top left, you have the print option, which basically takes whatever settings you have in place right now and sends it off to the printer. Same thing that would have happened if we'd hit the print button directly from the browser. But of course, again, we want to play with some of these settings before we think about printing, so we're gonna move on. By default, this will usually come up in portrait mode. Portrait mode is just the, the layout of the page, which we consider to be the traditional layout for a page on an eight and a half by 11 sheet with the eight and a half area being at the top and bottom and the 11 inch area being at the left and right side of the page. You do have the option here to very quickly switch it to landscape. Landscape flips the page on its side and you can see what the, what the web page would look like if it's printed in landscape mode. Another item here, I'm gonna skip over this for a moment, the moment, the page setup, and I'm gonna go over to headers. By default, every time you print something off the web, uh, in, in Internet Explorer, you get the name of the page up here in the header, page one of one in this case, or one of two, whatever the, the page count may be. In the lower right, it shows you the date, and in the lower left, it shows you the full web address from which this page was printed. That may not always be information that you care to have in your printout, especially if you're looking for a very clean representation of the page. So you can very quickly here turn those headers and footers off just by clicking that button. And now you see I have a much cleaner printout. Or if I click this again, this is a toggle switch, and every time I click it, it turns them either off or on. Now these next two, these next two, uh, first of all, I'm gonna put this back into portrait mode. These next two buttons here, the view full width and view full page, actually have no bearing whatsoever on the way that the page will look when it's printed out. This only affects the way it looks to you in this little window when you're trying to edit things. So if I click, you know, you'll notice that as it's showing it here in full page mode, sometimes things might look fairly crammed. You may not have, be able to discern things properly because they are compressed down into this little window so that you can see the full page. But maybe you want to get a clearer view for what things like, like text look like here. So in order to do that, you would take this out of the full page mode and you would click view full width. And now you can see it's going to expand it across the width of this window so that you can get a better view for the items that are in the middle of the page. Or if you want to get a sense for how the whole page looks in mass, you can switch it back to view full page. This here also determines the number of pages that you're going to see. Now in this case, there's only one page to print, so we're only ever going to see one. But if you went to like 12 page view, you can see that it shrinks it very small because it's going to give you room on screen to see 11 other pages as they, as they would be presented in the print uh, when they're sent to the printer. But since I'm only working with one page, I'm going to go back to the single page view. And here you have the amount that you want to shrink the page if you want to uh, expand or shrink it. So like by default, you can put it on 100%. 
you can put it on 200%. Now notice when I when I start to make it bigger, stuff goes right off the page, and it's not it's no longer going to fit on this single page because I put it on 200%. That's why shrink to fit usually means that comes up by default. It means it's going to take this web page and it's going to try to fit it into one singular printout page, but you can always change it here if, if need be. And one thing I want to spend a little time uh, going through specifically is these handles that you see at the top and at the side of this page. These handles allow you to manually change the margins. Now, the margins, of course, you're going to have to have some type of print margin if this is going to properly come off your printer. But oftentimes, uh, the margins that come by default may not give you enough space to properly fit something on a page. So you might want to shrink them or, or expand them. So you can see I can go up here and my cursor changes and then I can click and drag this. I put my left mouse button down and hold it down as I scroll over to the right. And now my margin, my left margin becomes much wider and I can make my right margin much wider, which of course has the effect of squeezing the middle of my page. Or I can take the top margin and make it taller or smaller actually, make the bottom margin smaller. Maybe I'll take these margins now and put them back out to being a more reasonable place. Now, having shown you those, I'm going to go back up here to this button that looks like a cog. That's the page setup button. And the page setup button really allows you to edit most of what we've been doing here already in very specific uh, quantitative numbers. So when I click on this, you'll see there are some of the things we've already been messing with. Uh, first of all, there's the header and the footer, which you could just empty out. And these right here, uh, or beyond the scope of this tutorial right now, but these are a bunch of variables that you can put in there. And those variables tell it to put in uh, the date, the address, etc. And you can put in different values if you want to change the header or the footer. But if you wanted to get rid of the header or the footer altogether, you could simply delete these out. But of course, you had that option up here as well. You can see where we can change it to portrait or landscape, just as we could do on this quick view up here. Here you can get very specific on your margins. Notice you can get down to the hundredths of an inch, uh, telling it exactly how much the top left, bottom, and right margins should be. And you can get very specific with your paper size as well. 8.5 by 11 is not always the size you're going to print to. You might be printing to uh, more like a, a legal pa a page, which is 8.5 by 14. Of course, it gives you options to print to a whole, whole host of other rather funky sizes as well. And aside from going through specific sizes, you can also choose to customize that as well. See, they have different custom numbers here. The source, uh, we'll pretty much leave alone for now. And the printer, you can decide which printer this is going to go to if you have multiple printers installed on your system. But I'm just going to click OK. And if I were to hit the print button now, this would send the document exactly as I see it on screen to the printer. But you can see here where you have a lot of ability, of, of high ability to visually change the environment before you send it off to a printer. Hopefully this saves you a lot of uh, junk paper in bad printings that get sent, to the, sent off where you have to continually change parameters, print it off, see what it looks like, change the parameters again. Ideally, you would change as many of those parameters as possible here in this graphic display, and then you would have a higher degree of confidence that when you do finally send it to the printer, it will in fact be the copy that you're looking to print. And just closing this out goes back to the browser window without printing it at all. That concludes this tutorial, and thank you for using showmeacademy.com.